Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about World Vehicle by Brandon Sanderson. Um, this is a, as the moment, standalone novel, which is pretty good because it has like, you know, nice beginning, middle, and end. It wasn't a huge commitment, as was um, the Mistborn trilogy, which I also really enjoyed. So, right now I'm 5 for 5 on Brandon Sanderson. I've read 5 of his books and enjoyed 5 of his books. So, you know, I, I, I asked for these for, for my birthday. So that probably keep me busy for a while. Um, yeah, I actually enjoy this very much. You know, the magic system's cool. I'm not really a huge, like, stickler for magic systems, but I like how it was very different from the Mistborn one. You know, it's not just doing the same thing over and over again. Uh, I really like the characters in this, which I'll talk about later. I like how, like, fully lived in the setting feels. Like, this feels like it'd be, it could be an actual world. Um... If they were going to make, like, a movie adaptation of this, I hope they do it justice. I don't know if they have a law, but I don't know. I feel like it has the potential to be, like, a very good movie. But, so, as the title suggests, World Vehicle. So, I thought this was going to be, like, trying to, you know, end this rule. Um, but it's kind of the opposite. It's trying to stop a rule from starting. Which, um, normally, you know, like, if there's things, in, if there's a rule... That's like the most action heavy part, very interesting, like, you know, Song of Ice and Files, they have the rule, Lord of the Rings, Star Wars has a rule, um, you know, but the fact that this doesn't have a rule and the whole thing's like trying to stop a rule from happening is interesting in and of itself. You know, it's not like big physical fights between each other, it's a lot more political scheming and, you know, trying to stop it from happening. But I think that's pretty unique. We follow three main characters in this. We follow Ravenna, we follow Siri, and we follow Light Song, along with several other secondary characters. I guess I'll start with Ravenna, who, um, at first, like the first half of the novel, wasn't exactly my favorite. Um, I think because she's kind of spread out from the rest of our characters, uh, but she's still doing her own little side quest. I I, I do I do enjoy her a lot more in the second half of the novel, when, you know, we see, um, her supposed gods, they, they betray her, and she has to live on the street for a while, and start up her own revolution with fashion. Um, I don't know, I like the growth she goes. She's kind of, she, she's, um, kind of starts off very prim and proper, and has to go through this whole, like, ordeal of actually going through shit to become this you know, more capable, I guess. Not that she isn't at the beginning, but she becomes a lot more experienced as the novel goes on. Vassal is also a very interesting character because, um, I don't know, I, I, I like his sword. I like that his sword could talk to him. That's pretty badass. I, I mean, I love a good swordsman, um, being a Zoro fan. Uh, I like his kind of dark and mysterious backstory, and you never know, like, at the beginning, you don't really know whether or not to trust him. Well, Vivenna doesn't. Um, and I like the, I like the, uh, unlikely friendship that stores between them. I don't know, I, I think it's cool. I'm also a big Siri fan. She probably was my favorite of the book. So, originally, Ravenna was sent to marry, um, Sisebron, who is the, uh, who was the god king. Uh, but Siri was chosen instead, because the dad was like, uh, I like, I like Ravenna battle. I'm just going to send Siri over there, because uh, fuck all, I guess. Um, so, everybody thinks, like, the God King is this evil mastermind, this all-powerful force of destruction. Um, it turns out he's actually he's actually pretty cool. You know, he's nice. Um, so, it's a very, like... The, he's, like, the opposite of Joffrey from Game of Thrones. Because at the beginning of Game of Thrones, Sans is all like, Ooh, I get to marry Joffrey, I get to be a princess. Turns out Joffrey's this monster. It's kind of the opposite. She thinks Siri thinks he's gonna marry a monster. Turns out he's actually pretty cool. I I, I like Sisebron. He's he's sweet. I also like Light Song. So Light Song has been um, how you know the the gods in this universe are kind of like the dead people brought back to life. So they're kind of worshipped as gods and they're kind of immortal until they choose to sacrifice themselves or something. So this leads to this very like existential crisis a lot of them have, uh, especially Light Song. It's like, well, I don't want to die, but I don't want to live forever, 
and you know, so he has to like find the right moment to sacrifice himself. Very cool stuff here. Um, I like how he acts so uncaring and um, selfish, even though like, you know, it's a very it's a very thin facade because everybody can tell he's actually like a really good guy. And I love when he sacrifices himself to save Sisedron. I don't know, it's it's really sweet. Um, I like his relationship with that one bitch. <laughs> I forgot her name. Um, Rose Battle something. Blue Fingles. What? Wait, no, that's not her name. Bless Weevil. Yeah, I, I I like his like constant bickering with her. Um, I don't know. There's just so much energy in this book. So much vibrancy. Um, I mean, not not like little even literally with like the whole color magic thing. But I don't know, I just really enjoyed this. Um, I, I I really like, I don't like saying too much because I, I, I noticed some of my older videos is just me reciting the plot line for line. And I kind of want to keep these more brief and on like my critical thoughts rather than just a summary. Denth is our major bad guy. I, I guess if I have any criticism, it's, I don't know, he's, he's just kind of there. Like, you think he's going to be friends with Ravenna, turns out he's not. But I do like like the full shouting. Like they kind of he kind of just laid it out for her. Like yeah, I'm not your friend. I'm gonna betray you. And then he does. So that's kind of clever. But in terms of him, I'm not like he's not like a, the best villain ever. Like some of the Mistborn villains will. He's just kind of there. So I don't know. Um, yeah. Overall though, really enjoyable book. Like I said, I'm five for five with Brandon so far. I'd say it's better than Elantris, but not as good as Mistborn uh, trilogy. So yeah really enjoyed it um i i'm kind of surprised how brandon sanderson could write so quickly yet be consistent you know a lot of writers who write a lot kind of wear themselves out after a while um and then you have like really good writers like george r martin who just kind of gives up and stops writing or takes them a long time but yeah i'd say brandon sanderson along with jk rowling are those authors who could just like consistently bring out these really engaging books, great characters. He, he does great characters, great world building, you know, cool magic, nice little plot twists. So yeah, I give this book a, uh, I'm going to give this book a B. The next book of his I'll be reading is, of course, The Way of Kings, which is the first book in the Stormlight Archive, though that video probably won't be out until late May, because at the moment I am reading Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, and my brilliant friends, so expect um, expect those videos be out in the next couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. What are your thoughts on World Very Cool? And I know these, I know his books are kind of connected to each other, like they all have some dude named Hoyt in them. Um, but I don't know. Don't spoil for me if this is connected to the other ones beyond Hoyt being in it, because uh, I really like I really like keeping things spoiler light. So basically, you know, what are your thoughts on this book? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Um, Please let me know down in the comments below. And thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, peace.